Hello, and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we are going to dive into the game and game series that you always knew was coming to Virtual Legality, Cooking Mama. No? You're as surprised as I am? Yeah, I can't blame you. I never would have suspected that Cooking Mama would be one of the more interesting legal discussions in the first quarter or now second quarter of 2020. But it is. If you're not familiar with Cooking Mama, it's a series that I think grew to prominence on the portable systems of Nintendo and was supposed to get a Switch version this year slash last year. There's a whole bunch of misinformation and different kind of reporting on this thing, all surrounding the fact that it was quasi-announced, it had a leaked trailer, it was released, and then it wasn't, all within the last couple of weeks. And that all led to what happened yesterday, which is essentially two different sides announcing a legal fight, Uh, one of which I think is likely to have the stronger argument, but both of which we have to essentially speculate on in the legal space because what's going to control any kind of outcome is the actual contract language, what these two sides agreed to with respect to this intellectual property. Before we get there, I want to give a little bit of background as to what we've been looking at with respect to Cooking Mama Cookstar, this particular game that was supposed to launch uh, on the Switch and did launch, kind of. And we've got here now an IGN article that's from April 3rd, just a couple weeks ago, that said the Cooking Mama game for Switch that came out and then disappeared. And it gives a little introduction about mysteries in the gaming space, and that says... Hey, no matter where you look, Cooking Mama Cookstar is either out now, coming soon, or completely missing in action. A trailer on the game's Twitter feed definitively announces that it's available now on the Switch. That statement is, at best, partially true. That was as of March 26th. That trailer points to an eShop version of the game, but if you search for that version at the time of this writing, you won't get anything, not even a coming soon entry. Even stranger, the game was actually released on the eShop last week, but only for a few hours before being unceremoniously pulled from sale and its listing scrubbed from Nintendo's digital store entirely. This was a wild story. You don't get a big feature in IGN about your release and non-release and quasi-Schrodinger status if you don't have something like this happen. But there weren't a lot of answers around why this happened. And this kind of article from IGN, which I'm going to link in the description, speculates on a bit of it. But ultimately, nobody really knew what was going on. And even after yesterday, it's still a little bit unclear as to what is specifically going on. But some people posited that it was about blockchain, that Cooking Mama Cookstar, of all things, was going to be mining cryptocurrency with switch processor cycles And that that was the reason it got pulled down in only a couple of hours because Nintendo essentially found that out late. Even though Nintendo has its own quality assurances practices, has its own certification procedure. And that kind of stemmed, that rumor came from some of the stuff that was contained in press materials that were released with respect to this specific game. And I've got a Nintendo Life article up here, which is actually well done because it pulls out these, these sections of this specific kind of press release that talks about blockchain. It says, Planet Digital Partners, which is one of the kind of parties to this whole thing, says, we are using blockchain to add new innovative gameplay that investors can now have equity in. And then they reference these blockchain things as, each purchased copy of the game will have a unique ID which will be managed directly through the game's internal wallet storage, private key enabled balanced DRM, Traditional DRM limits the ability to copy games while private keys on blockchain allow easy registration. Uh, Some kind of blockchain privatization uh, personalization feature. It it utilizes a private key to change expression algorithms for characters, ingredients, and cooking methods. Uh, Online events, digital assets, rewards, recognition. I looked at this, and I hadn't seen this before uh, doing some research for this video. I looked at this, and I have to tell you, I have experience looking at business plans. I have experience looking at these kinds of press releases. And this, to me, read exactly as someone that is just attaching blockchain naming conventions, blockchain kind of concepts. You see the reference to wallet and things of that nature into something that is trying to get money into their company. Um, this happened a lot, a lot more, a couple years back, 
where essentially if your company started talking about blockchain and cryptocurrency and all this stuff, you were more likely to get investment because it was a hot kind of item. Uh, if you think fads are limited to Beanie Babies and Pet Rocks, they are not. Investors sometimes get caught in these fads as well. And so blockchain as just a phrase was very, very popular among people that didn't necessarily know what it meant fully, but had money. And let's call them not bad actors necessarily, but opportunistic actors were taking advantage of that and essentially saying that whatever their product was doing, whatever their software was doing, had this blockchain component. So this reads to me as, pardon my French, bullshit. And pretty obviously that when you'd be evaluating a number of different business opportunities. But it might have sucked some investors in with the notion that blockchain was going to do all these things for Cooking Mama, Cookstar of all products. As it turns out, it appears that it is exactly what I would have suggested. As people kind of dug into this, Nintendo Life had a follow-up article called Cookstar Cryptocurrency Saga Takes Yet Another Turn as Publisher Blames Coronavirus, that people went in, looked at the code, and said there isn't blockchain concepts in here. First playable, the developers of the game came out immediately with a statement that said, as the developers, we can say with certainty there is no cryptocurrency or data collection or blockchain or anything else shady in the code. The Nintendo Switch is a very safe platform with none of the data and privacy issues associated with something like mobile and PC games. This is a release from February 2019, and we presume hypothetical like most releases about blockchain are. They don't want to have to pardon their French, but that's essentially what they are saying here. Blockchain was never brought up to us as developers. We were never asked to code in anything like that. And we were entertained to hear about it in late 2019. Not happening anytime soon. So it sounds exactly like what I described it as. It's an investor uh, fraud in certain terms uh, to try to get more money into your company to get the thing going, which you should use to kind of concept out, okay, so these people uh, are probably... Uh, a little bit adjacent to what they need to be on a legal basis, right? If you're willing to go out and essentially lie about what your product is going to be to try to get people to give you money, I look at that and say, well, then you're probably likely to bend the rules of whatever contract you enter into. And we're going to see exactly why that's pertinent. Um, you then get other kind of things that might have been the reason why it got pulled down most of which are not what it appears to be after we get the press releases from yesterday. And then you had one of the developers actually kind of leak anonymous statements to Screen Rant uh, of all places, which was very interesting. And they actually said that the cryptocurrency was all buzzwords. The head of Planet Entertainment knows very little about these things. He just put some fancy language to get potential investors who like that stuff. As for the crashes overheating, that would be because the game has been Unity. So they blame their Unity tool set, which is, again not great, by many people working on their first game. It's not the best product, but it made it through several vigorous reviews by Nintendo and Sony. Note that reference to Sony. There is no way crypto mining stuff could get through those tests. I doubt anyone at 1P would even be able to make such a thing. And that seems accurate. The tests that Nintendo and Sony do on these kinds of things would be checking for, you know, outward bound data packets and things along those lines that are unexpected. But maybe it could slip through. Those processes aren't Perfect. The developer also revealed the real reason Cooking Mama Cookstar was pulled from the Nintendo eShop, stating, There is a legal battle between the publisher Planet Entertainment and the IP holder Office Create. According to the developer, this is because Planet Entertainment released the game against a request by Office Create to keep polishing the game or perhaps even canceling it. At one point, the Japanese official create, uh, official create which is actually Office Create, came to oversee development. An argument started and the clients were told to go home if they weren't being constructive. By the way, <laughs> I, I'm in a professional service business. Uh, if the client comes in and you tell them to go home because you're not being constructive, that's a very bad argument. That is a very bad uh, description of events. Uh, and that would almost certainly in my line of work lead to a client lawyer separation. So this is a very significant kind of argument. And the service provider should not generally be in the business of telling the clients to go home if you're not going to be constructive. Once they found out that Planet Entertainment had released the game, they used their Nintendo contacts, which sounds shady, right? But it isn't, to pull it from the eShop and stop production of cartridges. Because 
as we will see, if there is a copyright issue, if there's a licensing issue, if there's an intellectual property issue, you just go tell Nintendo, hey, if you don't pull this down, they are in breach of their contract. You are going to be contributing to the infringement here. Nintendo says, okay, that's that's the magic words. We're pulling it down. That's not calling up your buddy and using back channels. That's doing what Nintendo does frontward facing for license holders and things along those lines. So by describing it in this way, you start to get this feeling, right, that okay, the, the development side, the publishing side, they are using investment terms that are pretty much lies. Uh, the software probably doesn't necessarily match up exactly with the, with, what the license terms are. You're getting this feeling that Office Create probably entered into a contract that they shouldn't have and is now trying to figure out how to control what is a wild card actor. Enter yesterday, where I was informed by Nibble at Nibelian on Twitter, highly recommend the follow. A lot of good video game related business, law, leaks, and other news all the time on Twitter, highly recommended. Started showing what was happening with respect to these two companies. And so first, you have Office Create put out a a press release that says, hey, we know that this is all a big deal. What do we think about it? And they say, we would like to thank our fans and customers for their support over the years for the Cooking Mama franchise. As many of you know, Planet Entertainment LLC recently released Cooking Mama Cookstar for sale in the U.S., Europe, and Australia. Now, note that they actually reference that the headquarters there is in Connecticut. We're going to take a look at the Planet Entertainment statement, and it certainly doesn't sound like it's native English speakers, so that's interesting in and of itself. This was an unauthorized release in breach of Planet's contract with Office Create. In August 2018... Office Create licensed Planet to develop the Cooking Mama Cookstar game for Nintendo Switch. Unfortunately, the quality of the game builds failed to meet the standards that our customers expect and deserve. Office Create rejected a wide range of deficiencies affecting the overall feel, quality, and content of the game. More specifically, they identified those deficiencies and presumably asked them to be corrected. uh, Corrected but rejected the overall build that was being shown to them. Yet, despite being contractually obligated to correct the identified deficiencies and resubmit the corrected game for Office Create's approval, Planet proceeded to release Cooking Mama Cookstar without addressing all of the rejections and without Office Create's approval. So what they are saying happened here is that they've got an intellectual property, Cooking Mama, and we've talked about copyright. We've talked about intellectual property. That when you have something that you've created, like the Cooking Mama character and the basic kind of scope of their game, then you have the exclusive right to reproduce it, to prepare derivative works, to do sequels and sidequels and make a Cookstar version of your Cooking Mama game, to distribute those things, to perform them, to display them, etc. And what you can do to have another party do something for you is say, hey, we don't want to devote the resources to making a Cooking Mama game right now, is you can license your intellectual property. That doesn't sell it. That doesn't give it away. It licenses it out to a third party and say, we are licensing you the Cooking Mama look and feel and character and everything else. And what you are going to do is you are going to make a game that meets certain specifications. You're going to to devote certain resources to the creation of that game. You're going to make it to certain specifications. It's going to have a vegetarian mode. It's going to do these three new things. This is what the scope of the project is going to look like. And then also what it's likely to say is it's going to meet those specifications to our requirements. We're going to determine that those specifications have been met, and it may well include certain quality kind of scope specifications. You're going to make sure that a no load screen exceeds 15 seconds, which is a long time, but just throwing out there that there can be specifications that speak directly and quantifiably to quality. The issue is that most of these kinds of bits of language in a license like this are not going to be necessarily quantifiable. Mostly, if I'm on the licensor side, I would negotiate a license or a development contract or whatever this wound up looking like in its entirety by saying, essentially, uh, we will determine in our sole discretion when this thing is ready because we're the intellectual property holder. And if you put out there something that is terrible, something that breaks people's systems, that overheats switches, that does other things like that, then that is dilutive to the value of our brand. And above all, If we're licensing out our intellectual property, we have to be concerned with maintaining the value of that brand. That's why when you see discussions about, say, the latest 
Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game and you get articles in various places that say, hey, Disney was really unsure about letting us do a Jedi game. And we had to go and we had to clear all of these things with them. And we had to take all these extra steps to make sure that X or Y or Z was okay to be included in our game or to be represented this way. It's because Disney and Lucasfilm, first and foremost, are concerned with maintaining the value of the Star Wars brand. And if your release would lower that value, then it is worth it to them to not have it released at all. And that's the fight that you start to see here. You start to see whatever that was in this contract, these guys, Office Create, think that the milestones, the specifications, the quality requirements, whatever was in there wasn't met. And so if it wasn't met, They are saying that in their contract, they are allowed to require them to get it to a place where we have accepted it before they release it on the Switch, and they didn't do that. And we're going to see that the other side of the story here has another explanation for what happened. We have also learned that Planet and or its European distributor, which is Coke Media, I believe, has been promoting an upcoming European release of a PS4 version of Cooking Mama Cookstar. Remember, you heard reference to the word Sony in the quote that was actually given by the developer. Office Create has not licensed Planet or any other entity to create any Cooking Mama games for PS4. These licenses, these development contracts, whatever this might have looked like, can absolutely say you are to make a game for the current version of the Nintendo, the current version of the Xbox, the current version of the PlayStation, one or more or none. You can have your license say exactly what kind of build you are supposed to be making and maybe also that they're going to help you port something directly for yourself for a different platform. What they are saying is that PlayStation 4 was never even contemplated, which is a problem in and of itself because if your developer, if your contracting party is spending resources to bring up to speed a version of the game that you never licensed or approved of that presents its own issues with understanding and trust and how they are following the contract. Office Create itself has not been involved in the development of any PS4 Cooking Mama game. On March 30th, 2020, Office Create notified Planet of its immediate termination of the license due to Planet's intentional material breach of the license contract. Legalese, right? But what that says is we believe that you not responding to our corrections and then publishing it on the eShop anyway was a breach of what you have promised us you would do in your contract, which is to say once you have breached that, the license, the rights that we gave you to Cooking Mama, we can dissolve. And so now you have no legal authority to release that game at all. And we can go and tell Nintendo, you don't have the legal authority to sell this thing and Nintendo, if you help them out, we can find you contributorily infringing as well now that we've informed you of this specific issue. Nintendo doesn't want any part of any of this and says, okay, fine, we'll pull it down. That doesn't matter to us. Go figure it out. But the fight escalates. Office Create is evaluating all legal action against Planet to protect our customers' intellectual property rights and the Cooking Mama series, as well they should if everything is as they describe it here. And yes, I'm more inclined to believe the broad strokes of what they describe as happening with this legal saga, because in the secondary statement, there are some incongruities. And we already have, as part of this background for this, some, let's call it, alighting the legal requirements of fraud and representations to investors and what exactly is happening with respect to this project. Now, it's worth noting that a lot of licensors wouldn't necessarily let it get this far. First of all, there would have been vetting done on the license out process. You want to make sure that you're not dealing with a bad actor, that you're dealing with a company that is properly funded, that can do right by your intellectual property. And a lot of licensors would have some kind of trigger right to the actual publishing process, that you don't have the right to upload it at all even before it would be released on the eShop or wherever, you don't have that right at all until we have signed off on something. And maybe they retain the right to do it entirely, that the process that would be depicted in this contract would say, you're going to go through us. You're never, ever going to put that directly on the store. It's going to go through us and we will remit to you what monies you get. And a lot of developers can find themselves unhappy with that arrangement. We've done videos in virtual legality where we talk about publishers stealing the keys and things along those lines when things go wrong. I think it was Frogwares that had this issue. But overall, it helps to avoid a situation like this 
where you've got a wild card actor that just does whatever it wants and then you have to go tell Nintendo to pull it down and then potentially get them enjoined, heck, have a court order them to destroy the product that you've paid for, by the way, that you've you've paid for development of or that you were expecting royalties from, depending on how your license went. And now that's all gone. And now you're the part of this big legal drama and your game that was supposed to engender this goodwill to have money come into both you and the developer doesn't exist. And then Planet Entertainment talks. Planet Entertainment wants to explain the mystery surrounding the Nintendo Switch game to all Cooking Mama Cookstar fans. Office Create, the rights holder to Cooking Mama, approved a detailed game design in 2019. First playable, the game developer and Planet followed the exact approved design. So there are three parties here, right? Office Create owns Cooking Mama as a character. They license it out to Planet Entertainment. Planet Entertainment is a publisher and says, all right, we got to go find someone to make this game. They sub-license it and enter into a software development agreement with this other company, First Playable, what you saw as 1P that was leaking stuff to Screen Rant earlier in this video. And those are the three kind of people, entities, that are involved in this specific story. And the claim that Planet Entertainment is making here is that we had a development agreement, we went over the design for a video game, and we met that design. That design is the exact game on Nintendo Switch. It is the game that we released, which also includes many additional Office Create suggestions which add gameplay value. So that's setting up a defense in and of itself. That sentence is saying, not only did we include everything that we were contracted to include, but Office Create would come to us with suggestions, and we went over and above to put those things into the game. Now, that could be said better here, but that's what that sentence is designed to achieve. And then you get to the rub. Unfortunately, creative differences arose as Cooking Mama Cookstar was near completion that were outside the scope of our agreement and the game design approved by Office Create. So the claim here is that we had a contract and then Office Create asked us to do X, Y, or Z different thing. Now, if we want to frame this the opposite, I've already said Office Create probably sounds like the better actor in this from afar speculation as to what happened, especially since we can't see the contract, but they've been in this business a long time. Their statement makes sense. If we want to say, well, maybe Planet Entertainment is right. You look at a statement like that and you say, there are bad publishers that are out there that go and try to claim back whatever the development of something is without paying royalties by changing the scope of the process in the 11th hour, constantly doing things to change what's happening, maybe changing their mind, maybe they're dysfunctional and don't know exactly what the scope of the thing should have been, and developers can get stuck behind those kinds of issues, right? So it is possible that Office Create was going in there trying to make changes to the scope of the document and doing these various other things. As I said, based on that investment language, based on the whole blockchain kind of concept, I start to look at that kind of entity as inherently shady. And so I am disinclined to give full faith and credit to a statement like this, but they are presenting a plausible scenario that would 100% be adjudicated by a court if it came to it. By contract, Planet is fully within its rights to publish Cooking Mama Cookstar. That's probably not a lie because it would be a bald-faced one if they said that, which means that the contract that they entered into gave them the rights to publish, probably after it was approved by Office Create. So they're eliding a little bit. But again, it means that Office Create didn't bother to try to negotiate or even have in its licensing arrangement the right to control that publishing concept at eShop. They wanted to wipe their hands of this, let Planet Entertainment go with it. They trusted them, which will prove to be their mistake if they're in the right on all this stuff. But Planet Entertainment was given the final authority to hit that button and to collect that money as it came in to Nintendo. The next sentence is funny. There is no active litigation or ruling that prevents Planet from publishing the game. That is a really low bar, right? Where did that even come from? We're talking about a contract case. You say, by contract, you're allowed. That's fine. That makes sense. And then nobody has sued us and won to stop us from doing that. Well, that's true, but they could in the future. And you're kind of encouraging Office Create to pursue that avenue. You are representing now that you are going to be a wild card, that you're going to be a problem for them. And if you if they want to stop you, they're going to have to sue you. Ew. 
That's a, that's a risky gambit. Cooking Mama fans have been very enthusiastic about Cooking Mama Cookstar, including the many new features, including vegetarian and unicorn food potluck party, plus more. This is one of those sentences that I pointed out earlier that says, I, I'm not positive this is an English-speaking company that makes a comment like that, that doesn't follow grammar rules. Cooking Mama fans have been very enthusiastic about Cooking Mama Cookstar. Okay, great. We're good so far. Including the many new features, including, that's trouble, vegetarian and comma unicorn food comma potluck party so the and would usually go between unicorn food and potluck party and then you throw on a plus more so maybe the and belongs after the potluck party but before the plus more either way it's rare that you see a press release with unicorn food mentioned in it so i thought that was normal but you start to look at this and you say okay if that's the level of writing that you're putting into a very important press release this is a kind of bet the company type argument that you're involved in now with office create that isn't a good sign for what is the product that you wound up putting out there with Cooking Mama Cookstar. So again, I start to look at this and say, just from the ancillary materials, seems like Office Create has the better part of all of this. We appreciate the overwhelming positive response and support from Cooking Mama Cookstar fans. Office Create has our total respect. We thank them for their wisdom and wish them well. Wish them well is not generally what you would say in a press release like this. This is a parting kind of concept, but if you are going to be allowed to have this game out there, if you're going to stand by Cooking Mama Cookstar and you're going to solve this thing, it means you aren't parting. It can't be a divorce. If it's a divorce, that means you've lost and you don't get the rights to the intellectual property and all this effort that you would have put into the game and everything else is gone forever. Uh, We wish them well, very strange uh, at the end of this press release. So you've got these two competing press releases. You've got this overall concept that something has gone terribly wrong. And my best guess is that Office Create didn't do the proper vetting. You've got a very short development window here, right? August 2018 to release in April of 2020 is a short development window. They licensed Planet to develop something. They put probably their standard protections in that development contract type thing. And they didn't meet their overall field quality and content. Now, I've pulled up a template document of a software development agreement in case you haven't seen one. This is from PandaDocs. I don't like to use my own stuff in case a redaction makes it through my filters. And I I don't want to accidentally expose any client confidentiality. So my apologies there for not using my specific contracts here. This is a very short form document. I think it's like three or four pages long. And whatever we would wind up talking about with respect to this specific transaction would be significantly more complicated, but it gives you the overall scope. You've got a software development agreement. You've got someone that is commissioning someone else to make software for them. And you've got these duties paragraphs. You would say the developer shall complete the development of the software according to the milestones described. In accordance with such milestones, the final product shall be delivered by date X. And then you describe milestones. You'd say... By this date here, the alpha should be done. We should have a vertical slice version of a level that we can evaluate. Uh, By this date here, we should be free of most critical fail state bugs. By this date here, things should be being polished. The entire game should be able to be played from front to back. By this date here, we're prepping for release. You know, that kind of thing. All with the understanding that the publisher, the licensor, gets the right to determine when the milestone has been met. And very often you want to go the extra mile and put that in black and white in the contract that says the publisher gets sole discretion to determine that the milestone has been met. Sometimes the other side will negotiate that and say, well, it's going to be a reasonable discretion, that kind of thing. But that the licensor, the person licensing out their intellectual property gets to say something about how it's used. And here, this software development template doesn't really talk about intellectual property changing hands. But in this specific relationship that would be a part of this contract might even be a separate contract then you've got kind of delivery terms if the software is delivered does not conform with those specifications the client shall within some time frame of the delivery date notify the developer in writing of the ways in which it does not conform and the developer agrees that upon receiving such notice it shall make reasonable efforts to correct any non-conformity right that's going to be in every software or video game contract that the person that is commissioning this work whether it's a licensor or a straight up publisher or anybody else gets to say that this thing is meeting what we hired you to do. And this is the provision that I believe office create is essentially saying that planet entertainment didn't meet their responsibilities relating to, uh, then you've got references to compensation. You've got intellectual property rights that would have to be established for what the game actually is, who owns it and why. 
you've got warranties about how it operates. There would be a lot more language kind of surrounding all of this for making a Switch title. It would say exactly what you can do. It would have probably beta and alpha descriptions, what exactly that means for this project. But it gives you the scope, this kind of template. You have this agreement where you're licensing out intellectual property and the publisher slash developer, because they're going to be sub-licensing out the developer responsibilities, agrees to deliver something that meets your quality requirements. And so Office Create says that doesn't happen. And Planet Entertainment responds by saying, we met everything you told us we needed to meet. And then you tried to change it at the last minute. That is a perfectly kind of normal, he said, she said, corporate dispute, except for all this background information, except for everything else that happened with respect to making this thing, which inclines me to believe that Office Create probably has the better side of all this, especially with their history of putting these kinds of things together for a long time. And this statement doesn't give me a lot of uh, solace with what Planet Entertainment has done with what First Playable has done. And so I strongly suspect Office Create is going to be found to be in the right here. They're going to determine what exactly they need to do to make sure this game never gets out there uh, and that they otherwise correct what was initially released, potentially refund people's money, ultimately protect the goodwill inherent in their intellectual property, in their brand, and in their character. But again, all this lives in the contract. We talk about legalities. The only kind of legality that really exists here is that Office Create has the right to license out its intellectual property. And to the extent they that license, the contract terms that relate to what was actually conveyed to somebody like Planet Entertainment were breached, then they have all this ability to go and do these various things. So at the end of the day, we don't know what we don't know with respect to what's in that contract, but we can make educated guesses. And it would surprise me if this doesn't wind up getting settled, it goes away completely. You never hear about this game again. And Planet Entertainment essentially demurs on all of the points, all the argumentation that it tries to make here. Now, that might not happen if Planet Entertainment is in hawk to some investors and they need to go and defend this to the, to the end because this is a company breaking type dispute. So you might get some fireworks, but it sounds like they don't have the better part of the argument here. Either way, if more happens on this, we will definitely follow it in virtual legality. Thank you so much for checking in with us. We talk about these kinds of things when we're not otherwise talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake here or on Twitter all the time. Please share it around. Please like, please subscribe, please leave comments. We love to hear from you. Otherwise, if you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it in its podcast form, thank you so much for listening. I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.